on the boat. <coughs> Halfway done this fishing. I figured why not set the camera up. So usually they just peel right off. But this little fucker here, he don't he don't wanna go. I've had curly that before but not very often the fisher. And I guess some otters, I'll do a video on scaring them too. This is what you don't want to do with an otter. You don't want to start ripping on them like this because they singe real easy. The fur slips easy. And like I said, they singe real easy. You can't stress that enough. Because <coughs> otters are just something. Nothing's easy. They struggle in the trap too much. They singe. You handle them too rough. They singe. You look at them the wrong fucking way, they singe. They're just a fucking pain in the ass. And most people take a really long time to scare an otter. And I don't know why. Maybe I'm strange. I take forever to get a goddamn beaver. It takes me about 15 minutes to do up an otter. Depending on the size of them. Got a new board over here. A little coyote board. But I just shaved her down to fit a fish here. It's right side around. There we go. Get up here to the saddle. It's just her feeling all that easier. Just that belly. You don't want to break that belly open. Doesn't really matter if you do. It just. From what I remember, because I can't smell. I haven't been able to smell for the last four years after I got it nasty concussion. That's what I remember. Them guests don't smell the best. And up in here, you leave that little patch of fur right here, because the glands are in here. Too bad. You open them up there, put your ring on board, let me tell you. Jesus, she's rough. They're part of the weasel family. So the fishers, the weasels, otters, skunks, mink, Wolverine, they all got that skunk smell. And I'm, I got about the most low tech skin shop you can imagine. All I got holding up is decoy cord. I'm not rich. Well, I don't know what really afford to. There's a bunch of shit to optimize it, but this don't bother me. Legs cut, she's all thumb work from there. And I'll be totally honest, this is only the third fish I've ever done. I used to do it with my grandpa. And the first one I ever did was with him when I was about nine years old. And again, he used to have an actual trap line, I think 12,000 acres. 22 fish boat at that time. And there was nothing for him to catch him. Five or six a day. Me? Well, <laughs> this year, I started out the year with no lure for them. And let me tell you, getting them to come to a fucking bucket with just a big chunk of deer meat in it wasn't working real good. I know where they are, they come around, but the air is just so cold that they couldn't quite find it. They couldn't quite sniff it out because the air was too cold and dry. So, uh, like I said, I had this bucket here out and they caught this little one in for three weeks. I knew he was coming through there. She, I guess, she was a young female. So she's come back through once in a while. I knew she kept coming through there, so yesterday, <clears throat> After we got the shitty weather, fucking an inch of crust on top of the snow from the freezing rain, we got fucking sled stuck on how many goddamn times. And after jerking that sled around, getting it unstuck, and the trailer with it out of the fucking crust, 
sweating to death. I'm checking a whole bunch of my traps with nothing in them because nothing wanted to move. And the leather is just bad. This was the last trap at the last spot that day and just made it over. Made it over. I mean, it's some giddy when I got there, let me tell you. But when I first walked up to it, I seen a black thing in front of the bike, and I see a goddamn fucking log fell in front of it. It had a log over it. And I got there, and holy moly. She was all pearly whites from the airways. Good ladies. And there's lady strappers out there. And hunters. And that's good. Anybody that you can get into the sport, get them into it. It's not even a sport for me, it's a way of life. It's how I make money in the wintertime. For a lot of people, it's just a hobby. And for me, you know, it's a way of life. Make my money in the wintertime with it. Catch my food. I, I eat the beavers I catch for the most part. I use the front quarters for bait. Other than that, I just eat hind quarters and back trap. Never, you ever give her a try? That's some tasty meals right there, let me tell you. It's got kind of the texture of beef. It's got a whole different taste to it. To be honest with you, it's almost got a sweet licorice kind of taste because of what they eat in the swamps, I guess, and all the poplar trees. You got sweet bark and sweet buzz in the poplar trees. So I don't know what the hell it was all about, so I decided to try popper bun one day. It was sweet, you can take a bit into it, and it tastes like shit. Hey, you went for trying everything with these ones. And, uh, my fiance upstairs, I love her to death, I'm surprised she puts up with me, come back stinking like old beaver caster and rat musk. And, Mink glands and everything else. She loves it. She just doesn't like the cold, so she doesn't go with me in the wintertime. Springtime rat trapping, though, by Jesus, it's on there. She goes with me then. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Can't say the blame her. She's from California, actually. Blame her through my cousin. Yeah, because he's a big online person. He was here for a little while, and I was on the computer sitting beside him. But he was doing everything the hell he was doing on some chat site. And, uh, yeah, I came across my fiance. We've been here for two years in a bit now. I asked her to marry me on November 13th. Take her right down the pond. I might just pull her back up here. Give her a little cut so I can get that pot off there. <coughs> Working off the river off. Oh, my soda popped. There. So close yet so far, right? <coughs> there we go. Whew. That'll work out. Here now, I'll get this one. Make it a little easier. I'll just cut her off. Looks like the pot here. I don't want to use that. I don't want to dull her up. 
for it. I've dug your stuff up in here. Gutter deer. It's like when somebody asked the barn knife to gutter deer, he's like, yeah, okay, and then you hear him hit a bunch of bones. He's like, ah, oh, fuck, man, why? Make him bleed a little bit. Carry my knives with me all the time. Whenever somebody needs a knife, can blow your knife to do this? And like, scrape something off? No. You fucking idiot. Blow your own goddamn knife. Down here, we ain't got no bud so far. He's got a very little bit. Down here's where you're gonna start busting into fucking arteries and shit. So you gotta be careful. If you don't want to make a mess, if you don't care, well, it don't matter then. Same on an old muskrat. Go get all the way down and all the sun, there's blood everywhere. See that right there? Artery comes up around the neck. Two, then you cut into those, you're gonna have one off the fucking mess. Blood everywhere. And I don't want to clean it up all over the place. It's already late. It's Christmas Eve. Well, I guess it ain't late, it's only 7.30. Okay, my bed then. Okay, now. More sensitive parts here. I got a different one. A little more precision. If I can put a hole in this fur, I'll just shut the video off because I'm going to fucking. I'm pissed off if I do. Every member of the weasel family, you can tell their predators don't build the same fucking muscle. Right here. All the way up. Right at the top of their head is the muscle. They are built to kill things. Do it very well. I had a fish here around my house here actually in the summertime. And I have cats. And a cat. Sanford, he's my best pal. The whole wide world. If that fish had to got him, it'd have been war. I'm talking war boy. Oh yeah, look at that. Fuck cut her. Cut that perjury. She's gonna be bad now. All over this. Awesome. Just think I'm gonna do it. I didn't wanna do it nice and clean. What are you talking about? Just try to cut his fucking ear out. I don't know what happened. I was skinning a muskrat <laughs> in front of my little cousin at the time. He was a, and I uh, gave her a pull. His guts just flew right out of him. The man, I've never seen a kid so mortified. It was, it was funny. His jaw dropped and he started screaming harder and running away and I didn't know what the hell to tell him. I didn't know what was going on. But I put 
this button. Now he actually goes with me now and then. He wants to learn how to drive. He wants to get his license. He's a good kid. Not afraid of work whatsoever. Good boy. Hey, there's a 220 guy. Man, they're making it work. They're making top noggin. My parents' house, and I rent the basement in his house. And, uh, my dad, he's not in a real good way, he's got some bad back problems, can't move around a whole bunch. So, uh, stay here and help them guys out as much as I can. Done. I'm like my people that be, hey, you still live with your parents? No, I don't still live with my parents. I moved back in with them to help them out. Because they're not in a good way. Mama, she's got fibromyalgia and it's just so bad. She can't walk half the time. She can't even move. Pressure to breathe. So that's why I rent out the basement. Do the stuff, do the laundry and all that jazz. My fiance they cook supper and stuff. She's an amazing cook too, I might add. So anyway. So yeah, so we're about down to the nose now, but we're, we're, we're about done, about done. If I start stuttering, I apologize, I've done it my whole life. When I was young, I first went to school and kids made fun of me for it, and then uh, after that left me alone because I give them all a speech impediment. He's autistic. John, he lives upstairs. He's got a room up there. Quite the fellow. He's funny, I tell you. Happy. Happy guy. If everybody was as happy as him, the world would be a better place. It'd be a good place. Call him Duck. Because everything he just rolls off and like duck off water. Like, like, like water off a duck's back. Nothing about it. I get a little grumpy now and then. But, he doesn't get grumpy very long. He's actually a very aspiring artist. He draws very well. Very, very well. He draws cartoons that he watches, like Disney and stuff. And all that jazz, Warner Brothers cartoons. And if you take a picture of one of them from the movie and put one beside one of his pictures, you'd never know the difference. Because he draws them that good. And there's a place he goes around here uh, for community living. It's where all the, all the special folks go and do activities and stuff. And he drew the picture for the Christmas cards this year. And his 
he got picked for. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, like I said, he drew the pictures for the Christmas cards this year. His guy, his the one that got picked to send out to all the families. If you'd like to see some of his art, just leave me a comment or send me send me a message, and I'll uh, I'll throw up a video of some of his uh, some of his pictures. And if you might throw some up for sale too, because he loves to draw. <clears throat> I know there's people that would find great uh, aspirations and and um, value in pictures that the autistic guy draws, or any special person for that matter, just because people have a very misconception about them. Oh, it's alright. He's very polite. You want to cut the bottom lip off the picture because they don't use that. Try to put the tag. Anyway, yeah, we might have never done the picture here. But yeah, my brother. Um, anybody wants to see pictures that he draws or wants to buy some, let me know. I'm up on YouTube for some videos for you to look at and you leave me over there. Alright guys, I'm gonna get on there and finish my bed now and I'll get back down.